What's up, math scholars and math haters? This is Mr. W. Today we're going to tackle question 6 in the Math 1 questions that North Carolina released this past school year. The question tells us that a company models its net income in thousands of dollars with this big mon uh, monstrosity of a quadratic function, where x is the number of units of its product sold. And we're trying to figure out how many units of its product does the company need to sell in order for the net income to equal zero dollars. Now the big skill that this question is testing is solving a quadratic by factoring. So what I'm going to have to do is go over factoring and also go over what it means for actually solving one of these. There was another question where I um, went over the idea of FOIL, where if I have two binomials like x plus 1 and x plus 4, I would multiply my first numbers, outside numbers, inside numbers, and last numbers, F-O-I-L, in order to um, get an expression that looks like that. We're essentially going to be doing the opposite of that FOIL process in this problem. Uh, but the first thing I'm going to start with is actually looking at just my coefficients, just my numbers, not necessarily my variables. And I'm going to look for some number that they have in common as a factor. Now that number is 9, and I actually got there by doing some divisibility tests for 9. So if any number has digits that add up to 9 or a multiple of 9, then that number is itself a multiple of 9. So 9 obviously works. 54, 5 plus 4 equals 9. And then 144 is 1 plus 4 plus 4, which also equals 9. So using that rule of divisibility by 9s that you might have forgotten since whenever you learned it in, I would guess, elementary or middle school, um, we can actually figure out that 9 is a common factor of each of our coefficients and divide each of our coefficients by 9. So x squared... Uh, or so 9x squared, we pull 9 out from that and we're just left with x squared. Uh, 54, if you remember from times tables, is 9 times 6. So minus 54x becomes minus 6x. And now for 144, I'll actually demonstrate a bit of long division here. I would see how many times 9 goes into 1 for my hundreds place and it doesn't. I see how many times 9 goes into 14, and it goes into 14 just one time. So 14 minus 9 gets me 5 tens left. I bring down my 4, and I'm now left with 54 ones, which once again, 9 goes into that 6 times. So minus 144 becomes minus 16 once we pull the 9 out from that. And now I'm going to do something that is going to make this problem a lot easier and it is only slightly cheating in mathematical terms. Because if we're going to figure out the solutions to this and when it equals zero, we actually don't need any of this stuff. So by factoring out this, this 9 and actually dividing each of my terms, each of my coefficients by 9, I've narrowed this down to a function with some much easier numbers to work with. And now, how do we factor this? Well, of course, there's no other numbers we can um, pull out of this, no other factors. So what I'm going to have to do is find two numbers. I will call them A and B. And the idea is I want them to multiply to give me this number here on the end, and I want them to add to give me this number here in the middle. Now, since this number on the end is negative, that essentially means that I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to get me 16 and have a difference of 6. And those two numbers, in case I didn't jump to your mind already, were 2 and 8. Now the question is, which one gets the negative sign? Because negative 2 times positive 8 or positive 2 times negative 8 will both get me negative 16. But what happens when I add 2 and negative 8? That's like saying 8 minus 2, but I keep the negative sign, so that gets me negative 6. So this is the pair that I'm looking for. And now what I'm going to have to do for this, to write this out in a factored form, I'm going to take this number, put an imaginary plus sign with it, and write x plus 2 as a linear factor, a factor of a quadratic expression that looks like just a linear equation. I'll do the same thing over here for my minus 8, and make x minus 8. So now, I've factored this out so that it just looks like two factors that have an x plus or an x minus with them that now we can work with. 
And now I'm going to go back to this idea that I covered a little bit in question one when we talked about um, graphs and graphing a quadratic function, that if either of these equals zero, this whole function does, because zero times whatever equals zero. Same thing for this one. If this one is zero, zero times whatever this would be still equals zero. And I'm going to say if x plus 2 equals 0, what does x equal? If x minus 8 equals 0, what does x equal? Now at this point, the math here is easier than most of what we've done so far in this question because I just need to take plus 2, make it minus 2. Negative 2 plus 2 equals 0. Same thing for minus 8. It turns into positive 8, also known as 8. So I actually have now my two zeros. But the question is, which one is actually my answer? Well, now to figure that out, I just need to look back at the problem. How many units of its product does the company need to sell in order for the net income to equal zero? And I look at negative two and I think, wait, a company can't sell negative products, so it has to be just eight. My answer has to be just eight. So thank goodness we got through all of that. Last thing I want to demonstrate is just how we are going to fill this out in the gridded response sheet. So I bring this up, and I'm going to say that if my answer is 8, thankfully this is one of the simpler ones to do. Answer is 8. So 8 just goes in that box. Below this box, I'm going to look for a bubble with 8 in it. Circle that and bubble it in. 